Alright, so we got a couple of huge names returning in round 6. Before we get to that though, let's review how we did in round 5. And we, we did alright, uh, first and foremost. A couple teams rolling out the red carpet for us, you hate to see. Thanks a lot to the bloody Roosters and the Panthers. Two pretty big upsets, I'd say. People are trying to downplay the manly one without Cleary, but come on, it's the, the pair of Panthers system, right? They've actually got a decent strike rate without Cleary, so you got to tip manly for that win. As for the Roosters and the Bulldogs, that was an all-time grueler. The Bulldogs looking super physical, kick-out, damaging, just like he was at Penrith. In the other loss, the Roosters being down one for most of the match, almost pulling out the win was pretty typical in itself. And uh, yeah, we almost got a perfect round off the Warriors. I, I will say though, Roger Tuivasa Sheik did jump onto the wing for our try scorer, Dallin Martini Zelesniak. Other than that, in terms of picks, we got six from eight, nailed five margins and had two perfect games thanks to the Storm and Eli Carto and the Finns with Hamiso Tabuai Fido. Now it's time to take a look at what round six has for us. Let's go make some predictions. So kicking off this week's matches on the Thursday, the Knights host the Roosters at McDonald Jones Stadium. Uh, looking through changes, no changes for the Knights, although Mazu is in reserve, so he'll most likely be a late inclusion for the Chooks. We got Teddy and Sammy Walker out with an HIA. Also, Young is suspended for his actions last week that got him set from the field. So filling in for Teddy will be Joey Mano at fullback. Um, Michael Jennings will be starting at centre and Connor Watson will be playing 5 with Lukiri playing halfback. They've also got Junior Pawa coming in for uh, for Dominic Young. They also have some new additions to the bench with Zach Docker Clay in the 14th for Connor Watson, who, like we said, got elevated. And Sitili Dubonua will be moving to the bench, uh, making way for Nat Butcher, who makes his return. And that means Egan Butcher will be the one to drop out of the 17. As for my pick, I've got the Knights 1 to 12. I do like them at home. KP slowly but surely getting back to that form that we saw late last season. And I do like the new halves combo in uh, Cogger and Jacko Hastings. Historically, it is a favourable match for the Chooks, given in their head-to-head -head from 47 played, they've won 33 games. And in their previous meeting, they actually beat them at McDonald Jones with uh, Joey Manu at fullback. Uh, but yeah, my pick for this match, I'm going to go with the Knights in a close one. That's 1-12 to with Bradman Best to bag a meat pie. Game 1 in our Friday doubleheader, we have the Storm hosting the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Both teams coming off a win, uh, the Bulldogs with an impressive upset over the Roosters in one of the most weird games I've seen. Super long match. When I say impressive, we're really talking about uh, what got them the lead. Everything after that was pretty terrible. The Storm, they're coming into this, barely scraping by the Broncos, 34 points to 32. It was an attacking masterclass by both sides. And uh, yeah, looking at the changes, we'll start with the Storm. They've made one change, Tebai Moedor joins the bench in place of Jack Howard through fours into the reserves and uh, Nelson, speaking of reserves, is still named there. He has been named there for the past couple weeks, but has been playing cup. So will this be the week he gets elevated? We'll have to wait and see. For the Bulldogs, they'll be without Blake Taff, Harrison Edwards and Kurt Mann. So Crichton moves to fullback, Kraz moves to the centers and Josh Adokar returns from his uh, medical suspension suffered in that collision with Latrell Mitchell. Replacing Kurt Mann at lock will be Jermaine Salmon and Curran will move into the back row. Finally onto the bench they've got Boasafa Omausili and set to make his debut Bailey Howard. In the head-to-head, -head, it's actually pretty close. Of the 45 games played, the Storm are barely in front of 23 wins. More recently, last season, the Bulldogs actually uh, beat the Storm pretty convincingly. That was without Cam Munster and Ryan Pepinazen. Do I think an upset is on the cards? If they come out as aggressive as they did against the Chooks, then anything could happen. But uh, I'll be on the side of the Melbourne Storm in this. Honestly, I won't be tipping against the big four much. I do like when they have all their guns. Pappenhausen a little quiet last week, so I'm looking to him for a meat pie this weekend. Yeah, I do think the Bulldogs will keep it close. We'll go Melbourne Storm 1 to 12. Ryan Pappenhausen. Headlining the Knights, we have an absolute juicer between the Broncos and the Dolphins at Suncorp Stadium. There's a lot of changes to both sides. As we do, we'll start with the home side. Uh, Reese Walsh will be back at fullback and Tristan Saylor will actually remain in the squad. He's been moved to the bench. They will also be without to their skipper Reno and rookie Dean Mariner. So Jock Manor will replace Reno and Corey Oates will get his first start 
of this season. On the side of the Finns, they got a couple of big outs with Agalfusi and Farnworth. So filling in for Herbie will be Desi New. And in the back row, they welcome back veteran Kenny Bromwich to the starting side. Uh, they've also got a couple of old Broncos joining the bench in Jared Wallace and Anthony Milford. In the Starby, I will be taking the Broncos. Now, I'm not confident in the pick, I'll be honest. I mean, I never am with the likes of Payne Haas and especially Adam Reynolds for his guidance and control on field. But I want to back them in to lift for the Starby and I want to take Godoni Stags for the meat pie. Kicking off Saturday's triple header, we have an absolute banger between the New Zealand Warriors and the Mandy Moringa Seagulls. So this being played at Go Media Stadium in Auckland and in terms of changes... Uh, let me bring up my notes here. We got so the Warriors. They welcome back Dalen Watinez Lesniak and Kurt Capewell. So RTS moves back in field while Pompey drops out of the 17. Kurt Capewell also joins uh, that starting side. For the Seagulls, they have uh, one change, and that is Ben Jabojevic. He'll be filling in at center for the injured Ruben Garrick. Taking a spot in the back row will be Waddell, someone that's been low key pretty effective for uh, the Seagulls in recent matches. My pick in this, I do like the Warriors. Them playing in Auckland's a bonus, but yeah, the way they've been playing, they've been really impressive, even in their losses. I'm bringing up the head to head now, and it is not looking good for the Warriors. From 38 games played, the uh, Seagulls have 125, Warriors 13. The last time they played was in Auckland, and they did get the win, uh, barely 29 points to 22. This without the likes of Tom Trebojevic and uh, the new recruit Luke Brooks. This could be a pretty close game. So we'll take the Warriors 1 to 12. And for a meat pie, a lot of the guys that I typically take have been scoring heavy. Your Jackson Fords for value. We have been on Dallin a few times. I don't think he saluted when we've been on him. I think we'll look wide again. And instead of going with Dallin with Tennis and Lesniak, we'll jump on Marcelo Montoya to bag a meat pie. That's Warriors 1 to 12. Game 2 in our triple header, we have the Eels at Combank taking on the Cowboys. Now, we'll start with the Eels here. They've got Blaze Talangi, Watamu Greg, and Micah Sivo all dropping out of the 17. In their fill-ins, they got Harper coming in to play center, pushing Bailey Simonson out to the wing. And Deja Nasi finally gets a look in the starting side, filling in in the halves for uh, Blaze Talangi. Cartwright makes his way back from an injury, forcing Kelma Tuilangi to the bench. And for the Cowboys, only the one change, as we all know, Zach Laybutt has suffered a uh, season-ending injury. And his fill-in for the moment will be Tom Chester. In the Broncos preview, we were talking about Renault and the importance of his, uh, I guess, guidance and control. And the Eels have been without that for the last couple of weeks without uh, Mitch Moses. Unfortunately for the Eels, their depth. When it comes to the halves, they have similar type players to Dylan Brown. I think of the two, uh, Talangi and Asi, Dejan Asi has a little more depth to his playstyle. And to be fair, I thought Dylan Brown would take more control in these matches and he just hasn't. As for my pick, I, I will be taking the Cowboys in this. In a game of three running halves, I'm going to back Tom Dearden to back us a meat pie. And I think the Eels respond and keep this game close. So we'll go Cowboys 1-12. Closing out Saturday's matches, we have the Rabbitohs hosting the Sharks at a core stadium and looking for changes. I mean, we'll start off the Rabbitohs, yeah? So, more musical chairs. Some forced, like Latrell Mitchell, who cops a ban for, I believe, his elbow on SJ. That opens the door for Jai Gray to make his debut at fullback. They have Ty Munro making his return, pushing Isaac Dewey to bowl out of the 17. And also, a huge shock, Damian Cook has been dropped to 18th man with Peter Mamazelis lacing up to start at hooker. Couple changes to the bench as well with Sean Kepi and Talis Duncan falling out of the 17 and uh, Shaq Mitchell as well as Harvili and Davy Moale will make their way back to the bench. So yeah, like we said, musical chairs. For the Sharkies, only the one change and it's huge with Britton Nikora making his way back to the starting side. Uh, he pushes Dalakai to the bench as uh, Keo Ido keeps that spot in the centers. And for my pick, Look, I don't know what's going on at the Bunnies. I'm not confident in picking them. So we're going to keep it short and sweet here. We're going to take the Sharks. We're going to take 13 plus. And to get a meat pie, we've got Teague Wilton. Our 4 p.m. Sunday game, we have the Tigers hosting the Dragons in Campbelltown. As for changes, there are multiple Category 1 concussions in the Tigers camp with John Bateman and Samuela Fa'inu unavailable. And that opens the door for the absolute dog to get a start, Alex Seifarth. What a fun watch. He moves into the back row for Bateman and coming onto the bench, taking his spot, uh, Asuka Bawa, who hopefully he actually gets some game time. They've also got Jake Simpkin in the 14 for 
Latu Fainu and Justin Matsumura for Samuela. On the side of St. George, they've made one change, so Hamisele returns and will start in the front row. That pushes the balance of the bench and Mick Mola will be the one to miss out. As for my pick, I am leaning towards the Tigers, although I do wonder how effective their bench will be because uh, Samuela has been super impactful as well as Alex Seifert who does get the start, you know. These two boys coming off the bench have added so much punch to this pack and I just wonder if they'll get that same impact from uh, their replacements. That's an Apikuroi so how's he holding up heading into this match? Uh, that's a few worries I have, uh, we'll be taking the Tigers regardless. Uh, that's Tigers 1-12 and uh, give me Alex Seifert on an edge. And in the final match of the round, we have the Raiders back at GIO Stadium hosting the Gold Coast Titans. Now, man, let's run through changes real quick, starting with the Raiders. They'll be without Tarapana and Horsburgh. That means Chevy Stewart will make his debut in the number one. Uh, as for... Actually, no, we've got Hosking returning as well. Straight into the back row, pushing Ata Mariota to the bench with Trey Mooney, uh, the other new inclusion to the bench. Now for the Titans, they've got Isaac Liu back from a Category 1 suspension, pushing Joe Stimson to 18th man. That's pretty much it. As for my pick, the Raiders looking red hot right now. Not only are they winning, they are getting big margin wins, 13 pluses. I've been taking them 1-12 to 12 a lot. Uh, this week we'll be going 13 plus at home and our try scorer, we've got Zach Hosking. And that'll do for our round 6 tips, as always, if you do have any tips and predictions of your own, let us know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed that video, be sure to run and share that like button. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you later.